There is a student debt crisis in the United States. College tuition costs have risen 250% in the last 10 years, and according to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, student loan providers don't always give accurate and timely information about how best to pay off loans. But ultimately, the main cause of the student debt crisis are the borrowers themselves. Take for example Taylor Smith, who has a bachelor's degree in political science and government from Texas A&M. To pay for Texas A&M, Smith worked full-time throughout college. She also cobbled together 11 student loans. Probably graduated with about 53000 in student debt. That number hit me for the first time my last semester of college, and it was the first time I saw the full balance, and I had a panic attack immediately. She took out 11 student loans and was surprised at the ramifications of taking out 11 student loans. You know, just thinking like, oh my God, I just got myself in $50,000 of debt. That is a lot of money, but it's not terrible if your first year salary is equal to how much you owe in student debt. So if you owe $50,000, you should make at least $50,000 in your first year. Then she had to quit her first job, her dream job, registering voters in Colorado. So she went to college for political science and government and her dream job is to work at a grassroots organization whose goal is to get millennials to register to vote? That's not even close to a 50 grand a year job. Not to mention that you can do all that without a political science degree. And now she works as a director of sales and account management at a tech company. Glad to see she's putting that $50,000 degree to good use. What about 27-year-old teacher Beth Hansen? In addition to working full-time at a Maryland middle school, she now works two other part-time jobs, running an after-school book club, singing in a church choir, and yet earned only $46,000 total last year, while still owing more than $60,000. You mean to tell me that running an after-school book club and singing in a choir didn't bump her up to six figures? Color me surprised. How old was I when I signed my first promissory note? 17? Am I really going to read said promissory note from beginning to end? Or understand it. Or understand it even if I had read it. Starting to see a pattern here. <laughs> Jessica Love Jordan is in a similar situation. She started college late and is now working on finishing her master's in addiction counseling. She juggles school, work, and being a single parent. And sometimes the debt feels too much. Now and again, when I look at the statement and see how much I actually have to pay back, it's almost suffocating. When she graduates, she can expect to make about $33,000 annually as an addiction counselor. Her debt will be about $90,000. Now, I'm not saying that being an addiction counselor isn't a noble profession, but she's paying $90,000 in tuition to effectively make $15.86 an hour. She's never, ever going to be able to pay that off especially with her being a single mom. Jordan Heft. He's been trying to get a more manageable payment plan. He studied film, but couldn't get a job in the industry. He now owes $100,000 in private student loans, but was paying interest only until recently. Hmm, I wonder why he couldn't get a job in the industry because those drawings are fantastic. But seriously, I really hope he's not bringing that portfolio around on job interviews. <laughs> wow. A few months after the end of her academic career, Nina denounces a system of which she says she's a victim. The diploma was supposed to open the gilded doors to a career that hasn't materialized. Nina went to the University of Maryland and has a bachelor's degree in Persian studies. It's a specialized field, and if you have a bachelor's and a master's, you can be very valuable to the U.S. government and have a job for life. I've spent over $129,000 on my tuition, not including the textbooks, not including the time, not including the energy, not including the jobs that I had to take, and I don't know if I'd do it all over again. You don't know if you would do it all over again? If you can't find a job and you claim that you're a victim, why would you even consider making the same choices? And if it couldn't get worse, Nina lives with her mother, who also has tens of thousands of dollars in student debt. Together, they owe $150,000. Talk about the blind leaving the blind. Nina's mother is in a slightly better position, though, because she works for the State Department and has a good shot at being eligible for public service loan forgiveness after 10 years. But like many people having problems with student debt, it's not their fault. 
Nina's mother says state governments prefer to see education as a commodity rather than as a public service. How does that happen? It's not like Maryland is all of a sudden unable to meet those accommodations or, or not wanting to provide services to students for the long haul. This is the future. These kids are the future for the state. But only if they continue to work and live in the state. After this news segment aired, Nina left Maryland to go teach English in China. So much for being the future of the state. My name is Brittany. I went to Tufts University. I studied drama and communications, and I owe $118,000 in student loans. $118,000 for a drama degree. I hope it's going to good use. I'm a freelance production assistant. I also work at a dance studio as a receptionist, and I also work for a temp agency. The problem here is that you can spend a hundred thousand or a hundred million on a drama degree and there is no guarantee that you're ever going to become a working actress, let alone a famous one. Moreover, the federal government should not be giving out student loans for people to major in things like drama or film studies. Every day I call Congress. Senator Feinstein's office. Hi, my name is Brittany King and I'm a constituent from Los Angeles. And I was calling to know, what are you guys doing about student loan reform? Aw, that's cute. She thinks that the government is going to pass comprehensive student debt reform. I was calling to know, what are you guys doing about student loan reform? Well, Brittany, since you didn't become the next Regina King, we're going to forgive your student debt and hand it off to the American taxpayer. Sound good? You think I'm kidding, but that's what some presidential candidates like Senator Elizabeth Warren plan to do. That's why I'm calling for universal free college and the cancellation of student loan debt of up to $50,000 for 42 million Americans. But what about the students who borrowed money, went to school, and paid back their student loans in full? Why do these people now get to pay for everyone else's free college? That's not fair. And thankfully, there are candidates like Pete Buttigieg who disagree with Senator Warren. Americans who have a college degree earn more than Americans who don't. As a progressive, I have a hard time getting my head around the idea of a majority who earn less because they didn't go to college, subsidizing a minority who earn more because they did. And he's right. Furthermore, why should taxpayers get to subsidize Taylor's political science degree when she didn't even use it? Or subsidize Nina's Persian studies degree when she's not using it and working in another country, or Jordan's degree in film studies. Seriously, what the hell is this? <laughs>
Maybe it was the fact that under his name, there are pieces posted on Thought Catalog about a Jack Kazeer squatting in a foreclosed home in Florida and testing positive for the worst STI you can imagine and having to call a bunch of past lovers telling them to get tested. If I were a hiring manager, I probably wouldn't have a lot of confidence in this guy. Nobody's perfect, but keep those things to yourself or at least create a pseudonym. But yeah, sure, the job market, that was your problem.